The deals have been fast and furious, and you know he may always be the city's most towering sports figure, but as of Tuesday, he no longer looks over Cleveland, Ohio. The famous LeBron banner that hung for parts of two different stays with the Cavs was taken down today. Symbolic proof that indeed the reign of the king is officially over. We bring in our pal Woj here. We know Woj, the Lakers have dramatically shaped their roster, right? And there still is some talk that they may <clears throat> still be big game hunting. A lot of other teams might like the services of, say, a Kawhi Leonard. Right. What's going on with Kawhi? What's the latest on a possible deal? Well, the, the Lakers now, in the, in the way they've approached these trade talks with San Antonio, the, the, they're kind of showing their hand that they may be willing to just wait until next summer in free agency. They've not made an overwhelming offer. I don't think they've come close to meeting the threshold that the Spurs have. And the Spurs threshold for what they like, reality starts to set in eventually, and you start to look at what you can get. Boston, Philadelphia, the Lakers, you know, other teams who are interested. A couple questions, especially teams outside of L.A. Number one, the health. They don't have access to his medical information. And even if you give a guy a physical, give a letter to physical, until you see him back on the court, he's a top five player before the injury. Mm -hmm. Has, will he become a top 10 or a top 15? Will his body respond? You don't know until he's back on the court. He only played nine games last year. And then teams like Boston, Philly, others, they're weighing the chances they have to resign him. Leonard has been very consistent, and well, really privately, that he wants to go to the Lakers. And so to take him on essentially as a rental, to give up players' picks for a player who's going to leave after one year, Boston and Philly don't have to take big risks like that. Philly has not offered anybody outside uh, Embiid, uh, Ben Simmons, Markel Fultz. They're off limits. Boston's really got their top five players off limits. Boston's more willing to do a deal that's pick heavy. But the Spurs want good players back. They don't want to rebuild they want picks, and they want guys who can help them stay in the playoffs. You're talking about a former Finals MVP and Defensive Player of the Year here. Uh, you're reporting that still only 21-year-old Devin Booker is on the verge of a gigantic deal. Not that he's not going to be worth it at some point, but, but what are the numbers and why now? Five years, $158 million. Um, uh, Booker met today with his agent and son's owner, Robert Sarver, their GM, Ryan McDonough, in Los Angeles. They presented him with the framework of that max offer, um, largely agreed on it. They'll finalize terms um, Friday when the moratorium ends, teams can sign, or by the weekend. Uh, but he'll be there on that deal. He's eligible for his rookie extension. His draft class, um, players like Colin Anthony Towns are eligible. It's a no-brainer. This is for the Suns, who've really struggled. This is by far their best player. He's the guy they're going to build a franchise around. And with that kind of a player, you come in right at the beginning, you give him the whole max, you say, here you go, and uh, he signs it, and they try to build. But, you know, they had DeAndre Ayton in this draft and Josh Jackson at the top of last year's draft. You know, they're starting to build a nucleus in Phoenix. Ryan McDonough, their GM, is, is that they can hopefully start to make some headway in the West. But they've got a great young group, and like you said, uh, Devin Booker's only 21 years old. Amazing, amazing. You want someone to feel welcome, $158 million is a pretty good way to start, right? All right, Woj, great stuff as Thanks, always. Kev. Thanks.